So if we look at the driver's door where I get in, you'll obviously see a bunch of knives there. This knife is what I use to bleed the sheep. This knife is what I use to stick the pigs. And this knife is what I use to cut the cattle beast's throat. So obviously there is a steel there to keep them a bit sharper. And then I have my pithing rod behind the seat. So then in here underneath the seat is where I store my ammunition and bolts and magazines. So I've got the subsonic for ewes and lambs, the 22 magnum for the beef and the high velocity for the pigs and rams. So there's 22 magnum uh, magazine and bolt and magazine for the 1022 and there's the two magazines joined together for when I have more than 10 sheep to do at a time. And then there's just more, more bullets in the back there. Just to the right of the steering column, first stop I have up here a temperature gauge which gives me the temperature inside and outside. Then I have a clock, obviously tells me the time. And then down here we have four switches. This switch is already in. This one uh, controls a PTO shaft, which I don't have in. So I don't need to use that one. This one controls a light at the back. So if I have an early start in the morning and it's dark or I finish late at night, I can turn that light on and it gives me light out the back under the deck. This one is just for the reversing camera and this one controls the inverter on and off. So if for whatever reason the inverter gets low on battery, it will switch off and squeal at me. So then all I need to do is open this door, come in, switch that off, turn the key on, we'll start the truck, wind the idle up and switch it back on and I've got power. Just saves me getting in there of the truck to do that. So we have our uh, phone holder, magnetic phone holder, which this plugs into my ears, earphones so I can drive along with hands free. Next we have a GPS unit, obviously that you know what that does, and then my reversing camera. So that shows a picture of behind my truck where I can uh, back up to the animals that I'm doing or check the trailer and see where the rail lines up with my rail at the butcher shop. Next we have my iPod, which obviously goes through my stereo, that gives me reception where there is no reception. Right, so looking to the rear of my cab, first off I have this box, which fits my, my lunch and my bag in it, um, and then this one I have my first aid kit, log book, tags for the animals, uh, a label maker, spare batteries, insulation tape, scissors, just some general odds and ends. And then I have my rifle racks here, two of my rifles go there, it's where my tripod sits for when I'm filming like this, it's my lock for my rifles, put them through the trigger guard and then through this big eyelet there, and behind the passenger seat below this board is the 3000 watt inverter which converts 24 volt DC to 240 volts AC. And then behind that there's a box with a few tools, jumper cables, CRC, etc, etc. Right behind the seat in a pocket there is my phone books and my farm location guide. And then there's a tub full of towels, detergent, etc. And then I have my pithing rod there for the cattle beast. A bit of a dry clean dry towel dry my hands and a rubber spin just down there which you can't see. So now we go to the passenger side. There's a container here. So in here I have my scales to weigh the pigs and the beef. Quite often don't weigh the beef unless they people want them to weigh. Then I have a multi-tool in there. My lighter to light the gas burner when I'm doing the pigs. Uh, a spare shackle, spare pin, lighter, Allen key for the scolded de hero to get in there to the engine room, spare blades, reciprocating saw blades, and this hermijangi here, which is my stone which I sharpen my knives up with when I need to. So that sits on the back on the step, which I'll show you later. So that all fits in here, nice and neatly. There's a knee out of the way, all snug and nice. Behind the cab we have 
the Caliphant, which is powered by two D cell batteries, and then there's a nine kilo gas bottle for it over there. And then in here we have a 95 litre water tank encased in 50 millimeter chiller panel. So it means if I fill it up with hot water or warm water in the morning, it'll stay warm or hot through the day. So just behind the water tank, we have my inlet, which obviously allows me to collect the hose up to fill it up, and or if I want gravity feed, just to wash my hands. If I want pressure, I'll turn this pump on, which is a 24 volt pump in there, which gives me a lot of pressure, and it comes out of this hose, this outlet here, or it goes to an outlet out the back on the hose for washing the pigs out the back. If I want hot water, I simply turn a few taps, and the water goes through the caliphant and it'll either come out here hot or out the back hot. So on to behind the passenger side, behind the cab, we have 20 litres of diesel, spare diesel if I need it, and then you can see the gas bottle up there, and then I have 120 litres of diesel tank here, then I have the box which I put my skins in. And it's got a, a grill, grill floor, it's also where I put my stay for the cattle when I do my cattle. So if I want to bring them out, the skin, take the skins out, open the bottom side, and then I just pull them out of there. It's quite makes the job a lot easier. And at the right at the back, we have the step. On the left hand side, I have my steps. They're just held in place with this spring latch here, spring loaded latch. Out it comes. And down they go. Again, another invention of mine. So it lets me have two, three steps to get up on the truck and it's very sturdy and then when I pack it up it's out of the way so there's this contraption here which is a bracket which allows me to have my sharpening stone on so it sits in there like that and it's the right height for me to do my, my knives so I'll have either a bucket of water down here just to lubricate the stone or some CRC or WD-40 the beauty with WD-40 and CRC, it breaks up the fat, so any fat that gets into your stone, it just comes out. So if you've got water, it'll just push it into the stone and it's very hard to keep your knife sharp doing that. So it's just a nice right height for me, so just pull it out, let it drip dry, and I'll put it in the truck again. Just up they go, nice, neat and tidy. So this is the very back of my truck, so right below the deck there is the speaker. For the stereo which i've got to have music at the back of my truck breaks the day up and in there is the light for nighttime working under the deck and i also have one right up there to the right which allows me to work in the dark if i need to so then also you'll notice there's a sailing cleat here and a sailing cleat there so these are where i use those ropes for the cattle i'll pull it in here to pull the cattle beast up and lock it in place so what I'll show you now is the latch to keep my door open so it doesn't blow back on me. So undo it, come back around. And it's just got a uh, little latch for a flat deck of a truck, a small light truck. So that just goes in there. And I just flick it up. The door won't go anywhere. Undo it like that. What I normally do working, come around like this, there, and just give it a flick and it's on. Same thing when I want to go home. So as we get in my truck, this is the right hand side of my truck. So I have the hose here to wash the pigs and wash the deck when I need to. And there's a scrubbing brush open when it's hot, the rope that I use to bring the cattle to me when they're quite a way away, obviously a wet weather jacket, leggings that I wear most days and the ropes for the cattle and a tub to put some offal in. So as we go around you can see there's one, two, three rails, it's done a checker plate, a couple of buckets and to the very left of my truck I have my remote control which I take off when I do pigs and beef, uh, radio earmuffs for when I'm using the reciprocating saw, 
marker pen to write down the weight to the pigs and they're all segmented to where each pig is on the truck so I know which one's what and then my tools my trade down there and a few locks to lock things in place so things don't run away on me and also have inlet and outlet vents which I open and close at my will let the air flow through the truck and if we look up the back here I have some switches so that switch pull that switch operates a light out here which I can use at night time and this one operates the inside lights for when it's really dark so this is what it looks like when I've got the whole water cylinder in to do the pigs uh, obviously I fill it up here and it overflows up here so when it's full I, turn, I can hear it bubbling out so I turn it off all right, so here's all the tools that are used to do the pigs so when they come out of the skull to the hair sometimes I use this hoe, garden hoe that I've cut off just put a bit of an edge on it and cut the handle off short obviously and just it grips that hair the last bit of hair and uh, gets that off and then once that's done use my burner obviously turn it on just the flow there and with that one there and turn it on and just got a lot of pressure burn just that last bit of hair off and I also have this thing's just a calf chain puller and this is another homemade invention of mine that uh, I use to lift the pigs or drag the pigs away so you just put that around their leg and it pulls tight on itself and I've also got another one which is just another dog chain which I've cut in half and put a bigger eyelet on it there same thing around the pigs leg hook it up and I can pull it over to the truck and then I can put the winch rope on that one and hook them up. So when I fill it up, I have these quick water attachments and I've just put a hose attachment on here for your normal garden hose. I'll put that on there like that. Get my garden hose, put it on there and that fills the hot water cylinder. Right, while it's filling, you'll notice this electrical cord coming out of here, and there's a thermostat. So I've just put a flexible cord on it, it goes up here onto the top of the cylinder, and I've put a three pin plug on it. So I just plugged it into my extension cord, and that heats the water at night time. Get up in the morning, unplug that, check to see if that's warm, so then I know it's going, and I'm away. So once I'm at the job, and I want to empty the water from the hot water cylinder into the scalded adhera. I have this pipe here, another one with a quick attachment, and I've just put that on to a piece of alkathene, and then that's encased in a stainless steel pipe, which there's another stainless steel pipe on the end of this one, and it just stops that hose drooping because it gets hot. And that goes into the scalded adhera, that just clicks on there, turn her on, and uh, it's heated up to 80 degrees at night time and that'll stay hot all day and probably two or three days so just by pure luck the temperature comes out of here by the time it gets in the scalded the here and the steel's cooled it down it's around about the right temperature to start scalding so it's just pure coincidence that it's the right temperature so once it's full off of that clip those off put that away and i'm ready to get into it